Welcome back to Cox Connections, a program that provides up-to-date information on events that affect you, our customers. Human trafficking affects people in our neighborhoods and often people we know. Local children, college students, and adults can find themselves under someone's control before they realize it. Here to tell us about the project in plain sight is independent filmmaker Tamika Winborn. Tamika, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Human trafficking, a heavy subject and not one that people, I think, at first blush associate with Hampton Roads. How did this project get started? What inspired you to do this project? Um, I was previously volunteering with an organization and the backstory is I had a vision for this project and I was curious what was going on in Hampton Roads after learning about human, human trafficking. And so um, I began working on this document, you know, like the treatment, the pre-production work, pre work for a documentary. Um, in the meantime, um, Kevin Hornsby and Leah Gottlieb, Gottlieb they um, were working on um, another human trafficking piece with these young ladies going to Cambodia. And um, Will Rodriguez and I were in a board meeting and he overheard me talking about the project and it, how it affected Hampton Roads. And then he called a meeting and from there, um, we started working on this project and they really wanted to focus on um, this project because it really affected the people in our community. So you got various people involved in this project, like Scott Ridgell, the Newport News Police Department, VBJI, as you mentioned. H how did you do that, and what was their role? Um, I already had a relationship with the Virginia Beach Justice Initiative, um, and so they were very, their mission is to get it out. And so um, when we first met and I told them I was a filmmaker, they was like use your gift and so in a sense so once that happened they were very in instrumental in helping us um, connect with um, the various people. Um, a few months prior we had gone to a Scott Ridgell event and then um, so he Leah contacted him and um, the Newport News Police Department was at our training that for advocates um, with the Virginia Beach Justice Initiative so we reached out to them and they were you know, they're, and I just want to say the police department in Newport News is really amazing um, because they do really care. It's not just about locking these women up. They understand the roles and they're really active in training their police officers. So they wanted to help. They wanted to share this message. So it was really, um, I won't say easy. It was hard to coordinate in time, but um, it was just a really, really easy. Everyone just really cares about this cause so it was easy to get perfect on board. timing yes. sort of bringing all the elements together to make your film correct what are the various ways children are lured into sex trafficking sometimes it could be you know the obvious is kidnapping um, but then sometimes it's just someone uh, someone could be at the mall and watching a, a child you know paying attention to who they're not being who they're not around and so they um, sometimes lure kids just they're looking for the vulnerabilities and they prey on them sometimes it could be a young lady or young man that's already a victim and they're they have to recruit others um, it's so many ways and that's the scary part sometimes even our children are going to school every day and come home and sometimes can be a victim so we have to pay attention to not just how do we get in but also the signs once they get get involved in it. So tell me a little bit more about those signs. How do we, how do we know? What do we look for? I think the biggest thing is gut. You know, we have to follow that instincts when we feel like something does not feel right. But if you see, for example, a young lady, maybe, you know, really young, and then you see a much older man, that doesn't mean it can't be her grandfather, but it also could be someone, if that doesn't seem like a, a normal relationship, that might be some, someone to, to, something to, turn your eye to. Um, also, um, if you see bruising, if you see a child that's disconnected, um, sometimes socially awkward in a sense, um, oftentimes many of the young ladies, um, because they're coping, they sometimes cut. And so that's another thing to pay attention to. And if there's anything that just doesn't feel right in your spirit when you're interacting with a young person, it, it's better to be safe, safe than involved. sorry. Yeah. Yep. It, in, in calling the police, it doesn't hurt because if, if we're wrong, at least, you know, they'll be okay. But if you're right, yeah. then you can you've save a life. and you yep. can save a life. 
Um, I know that, you know, adults looking at a situation like that may say, well, why doesn't that child just leave? Why don't they run away or call the police on their own? What's your experience and what did you learn about that as you were creating the documentary? Oftentimes they're not able to, like they're not using their own phones. Oftentimes when the um, pimp is connecting or the, um, the person who's connecting those transactions, they are doing the transactions and then they're just presenting them there. Um, other, other times they're threatening their families. Um, we saw an instance when we were in training where one of the young ladies was raped, gang raped. They videotaped it and then threatened to show it to her parents, her church, her you know community. And so there's shaming going on. There's um, a lot of reasons. Um, sometimes they'll say, if you leave or you will kill your little sister, we'll kill your mother. And so there is this fear, but also um, they have witnessed sometimes the, uh, the pimp killing um, another person. And so there are various reasons, and I, believe me, if the child felt like they would be safe, they would they call would the police. It. So, yeah. But people are, are controlling Absolutely. them, definitely controlling them. Um, how do people see the show? How do they watch the film? Well, on Cox 11, they are, we're going to be running it ongoing for a while, and then um, shortly on Cox 11, on, online, they will be able to go to cox11.com and um, see it online if they, if they don't have access to Cox 11 at home. Well, thank you so much for the work that you did to tell this really important story and to engage people in understanding the, the signs, the symptoms, the warning signs, and really helping to protect young women and young people in our community. Thank you so much. Yeah, and I just want to interject one thing. Um, a lot of times we don't think about the boys, but it's is happening to our little boys too, so also be, um, you know, protect our boys as well. Protect yes. children, children, generally. Yep. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Thank Tamika. You. Thanks for joining me on this episode of Cox Connections. As always, I want to personally thank you for choosing Cox Communications for your entertainment, information, and communication needs. We know you could have chosen another provider, but because you chose us, we pledge to be a friend you can trust. We promise to provide you with innovative products backed up by a talented local team of professionals that will help you stretch your dollar. And we promise to continue to make a difference in the Hampton Roads community. From all your friends and neighbors here at Cox, we thank you again for joining us on this edition of Cox Connections.